Okay, uh, I think that we can start uh, as as the time is uh, is uh, is going on right now. So, good morning, everyone. Good morning to Finland. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Wormy to uh, all of all of you to this uh, Meet the Largest Marketplace in Poland webinar uh, by Business Finland in Warsaw. Uh, my name is Agnieszka Wrubel and uh, I'm a senior advisor as, at Business Finland uh, Warsaw office. And I have a great uh, pleasure today to host this, this webinar uh, for you. Uh, what is the plan? The plan is that we will start with uh, our uh, special expert. Mr. Cedric Framant, uh, and this presentation will be followed by our uh, main uh, guest speaker, Allegro representative, uh, Mrs. Uh, Katarzyna Rosa. Uh, so we will hear this way about Allegro as an um, ecosystem marketplace and basic rules of cooperation for Finnish companies. Uh, and at the end, we will have question and answer. answer session and you are more than welcome to, to ask uh, the questions also during the webinar please do so we will have the chat that you can write uh, already uh, right now uh, write something uh, so the box is open for you and for the for the questions uh, the webinar we have scheduled for maximum one hour and we will try to keep uh, this time uh, time limit so uh, please stay with us uh, ask the question uh, questions and, and and enjoy the seminar. So, uh, if we uh, don't, if you do not have a technicalities question, and I cannot see any in the chat box, uh, I would like to very much welcome our first uh, guest, uh, Mr. Cedric Framan from Valiance uh, Company. Uh, Cedric, the floor is yours. Thank you, Agnieszka. I will just uh, share the screen. With you okay so i hope you can all see the screen now um so my name is uh, cedric fromont i'm the managing partner of uh, valiance international uh, we are a consulting company supporting foreign companies expanding in poland for 15 years i'm in poland and uh, we are proudly accredited partner for business finland I will present you today uh, an overview of the e-commerce economy before introducing obviously Allegro in the second stage. But uh, at the moment, I'll just give you an overview of the e-commerce economy in Poland, which is uh, knowing a, grow, a big growth over the last uh, few months, uh, and especially uh, with the background of the COVID situation. Um, so firstly, maybe for the ones who don't know about uh, the Polish uh, market, which is Poland, Poland is uh, Obviously, a country in Europe uh, with the capital city is Warsaw, 38 million inhabitants. After four, around 40 years of under communism, it entered the uh, EU uh, in 2004 and a Schengen member since 2007. Uh, when I mentioned the 40 years of communism, because this has an impact in terms of intercultural approach also in Poland, the way, ways of history is important in Poland. Uh, the main strengths of the Polish market, uh, first of all, it's central location in Europe, and that's important. We can see that even uh, big players, uh, big international brands like IKEA, but also Amazon when it comes to uh, e-commerce has uh, many warehouses here in Poland to, uh, to uh, deliver to the German market mainly, but also to the other European markets. Poland is really a central location in Europe between East, east and West, and west and between North and South. Uh, it's also a large domestic market, 38 million inhabitants, as, as I mentioned. Uh, highly qualified labor force, which is important also for many industries. Increasing tr transparency for doing business, uh, a good ranking around 20 to 30 place in, in the world. Uh, stable economic growth. Uh, for those who don't know, Poland was the only uh, country in Europe uh, with uninterrupted growth within the last 30 years with an average of 4% per year. So it's a booming economy. Uh, the EU funds has a big impact on Poland. It's over 100 billion euros uh, for this period. Uh, so it helps in different projects, in infrastructures, in uh, digitalization and any other programs. And also another strength is the diversity of its economy. So you can find opportunities from uh, industries, automotive, aerospace, food, um, building industry, and many other sectors, uh, IT, obviously. Um, 
now a focus on the e-commerce market in Poland. Uh, Poland uh, is in dynamic development. The e-commerce market is in dynamic development. Uh, it accounts for around 4.3% of the European economy uh, e-commerce industry. Um, for the recent years, it's around 20-18% of annual growth, and I will come back to, to, the, to the current growth. Uh, we have approximately 28 million internet users, uh, from whom 73% are already shopping online. And uh, we see a huge number of new online stores creating every day, so 20, around 20 online stores every day, uh, to reach a total number already of around 40,000 online stores. Uh, and to illustrate that, um, I will mention one of our clients that we help in the Polish market, which is the company PrestaShop. Uh, for those who don't know PrestaShop, it's a, f a company with French headquarters um, having a proposing solution for creating e-shops and, and, uh, and um, promoting e-shop uh, uh, for different uh, countries in the world. Uh, a few years ago, they started to interest to the Polish market, uh, seeing that Poland would probably grow in terms of e-commerce. Uh, and after a few years of, uh, of uh, investment in Poland, they already now it's their fourth market in the world. Uh, they are the uh, most popular solution for e-shop in Poland already. Uh, and they grew to this wave uh, of uh, shopping uh, e-shops opening every day. So now it represent more or less 20,000 active clients in, for them in Poland. And now we are recruiting for their country manager because they see the huge opportunities of, of, uh, of business development here in Poland for the next, uh, the next years. Um, now, the e-commerce, uh, that was the figures and the, 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 what happened uh, over the last few years. But uh, now what we see with the COVID, it's an acceleration of this trend, obviously, like most countries in the world. But Poland, uh, as you can see, now could reach, uh, according to the latest data, around 22 billion uh, euros uh, of uh, of market value, which is uh, actually the double of 2019. So it's 100% growth estimated for this year. Uh, and uh, just to give you a few ideas about how uh, e-commerce is uh, is uh, is um, characterizing in Poland, uh, you have uh, the shopping frequency. It's usually Poles buy would buy few times a week, few times a month uh, online, and uh, they would spend around 20 to, let's say, 100, 200 euros uh, per month on average, if I take the majority of cases. Uh, so that gives you an idea of, of the e-shoppers. Just a few words about e-shoppers profile. As you can see, uh, Poland is quite well uh, diversified in terms of, of uh, profile. Uh, either in terms of gender, in terms of age, in terms of education, uh, and in terms of localization also. Uh, you have uh, kind of uh, an average range of, of buyers either from, either from, uh, from village, from cities, and from large uh, cities. So, uh, so that's something you take into account when you approach the Polish market, that it's quite uh, well uh, spread a range of, uh, of profile, buyer profile. The only statistic that we don't show here is the, I would say, 60 plus um, older pe elderly people which have less access to mobile. And we had we conducted some projects in this area and very few people have access to, to mobile and to internet. But when we go to up to 60 years old, that's, that's what we, we can, we can uh, see at the moment. Um, the growth of e-commerce also is the growth in M-commerce. Um, uh, you have to bear in mind that uh, that every third roti spend online is on mobile device, and we estimate that it will be over half of online sales within uh, 2025. A lot of people use M-commerce at the moment. 60% um, uh, use uh, apparently use a smartphone to buy online. Uh, please bear in mind also that Poland was always well advanced in terms of, uh, of uh, contactless uh, transaction. Uh, we were the country, uh, even since before the COVID, with the highest range of uh, contactless payment in, uh, in Europe and even the world. 99% uh, of people were using contactless payment well before other countries. That's why we get quite used to Polish Poles are quite used to pay and to use their mobile phone. There is a specific application called Blick in Poland, which is quite specific where you can pay everything almost with Blick system on your mobile phone. So it's also something important to take into account when you, you want to enter the Polish market. Um, now, what uh, kind of categories uh, do e-shoppers buy in Poland? Uh, as you can see, it's widespread. 
what I wanted to focus on is maybe on the food industry because I saw from the list of attendees that many companies are uh, related to food industries today. Uh, sorry for the other ones. It's just that I saw that uh, many many of you are, are, are in this industry, and I think it's important to have a focus on that. Um, as you can see from the left-hand side graph, food products were quite low in terms of uh, proportion of sales online until uh, before the COVID. And ob obviously, it's changed quite a lot because now the, the second place in terms of new shops are groceries. Uh, you have to bear in mind that in Poland, there's a, a huge tradition of buying almost every day, going to the shop and buying food products. Uh, you have hypermarket chains, but you have also a lot of uh, discounts and a lot of proxim uh, proximity shops uh, where people are used to buy their uh, their food. Uh, so it's a very big tradition, and it was not obvious for people to move to food products. But obviously, uh, due to the COVID, uh, there was... Um, a big change uh, and all the retailers and each, uh, and and food uh, supply chains had to switch to e-commerce and as you can see they had almost an early uh, 30 uh, 300% increase of the value of transaction for online grocery shopping uh, lots of most of the the main brands uh, on the market uh, switched to e-shopping um, I will give you an example of my neighbor even uh, working is in a wholesaler of fruit and vegetables. Uh, they were one of the market leaders in the south of Poland. And when the COVID arrived, they, they were supplying uh, mostly Hurricane uh, uh, and the retail, but mostly Hurricane uh, and uh, restaurants and, and hotels. Obviously, right after the COVID in March and April, uh, nothing happened. So they almost they were almost thinking about uh, liquidating the company, and they decided to switch to e-commerce very quickly, within one month. Uh, and at the end of June, they were hiring three people uh, because they were lacking of people in their in their factory to uh, provide services for e-commerce, and they were focusing mostly on e-commerce. So it's, it shows how quite quickly the the, the the market moved to e-commerce. And another uh, another illustrating. Um, Example of that, organic pharma. It's, in, it's one of the leaders in the in the ecological, organic, and, and um, bio sector in Poland. Uh, and in May in this year, they decided to uh, to build the largest warehouse of organic food dedicated exclusively to online sales. So also again, it shows how uh, quickly the food sector was moving to online sales. Uh, now, who are the major e-commerce player in Poland? Um, as you can see uh, here. Um, you will be introduced to Allegro, which is definitely the market leader on the market, but uh, they will be the best to present themselves, obviously. Uh, what I just wanted to focus here is that, as you can see from the most uh, used uh, online uh, stores over the last few months for the COVID period, uh, half of them are platform and half of them are just retailers uh, with their uh, Sklep online. So that's where you can see all the .pl and .com, they are all retailers uh, with their uh, store online. So it was a big switch and we can see that it's products that were people were familiar to go uh, on a normal uh, shopping that were switching to online shopping. What you have to know is the uh, Polish market is still quite uh, fragmented uh, and you have a poor consolidation on the market, not mentioning about the platform that we'll discuss later, but about uh, e-commerce shops. Uh, the 40 largest players have 44% uh, market share. And that's important when you want to enter the Polish market. There is no big player, I would say, um, in terms of retailers and in terms of distributors for, for e-commerce. Uh, and Allegro will present the solution after that. Um, and then you have a focus on the platform. Uh, obviously, as we mentioned, Allegro is definitely the leader on the market, but you have the other ones, and I will present them a bit more in details now. Platform accounts for around 51% of e-commerce value uh, in Poland and Allegro, which is definitely uh, the leader of the market. Uh, and then you have foreign platforms and some Polish platforms. Uh, just to give you an idea, obviously, OLX is, is, um, is mostly C2C. AliExpress is an Alibaba, uh, Ali, the Alibaba extension here in Poland. Uh, eBay, Seneo is one of the Polish also uh, uh, platform. Uh, what I want to mention here is you see Amazon. Uh, they have a lot of warehouses and development centers in Poland, uh, but they are not available yet as, a, as an Amazon on Poland. So uh, you can buy an Amazon, obviously, in Poland, but you would buy an Amazon France or Germany or whatever. There is no Amazon yet in Poland. Maybe it will change. Allegro may, might know a bit more than me than that. But at the moment, uh, they are only uh, servicing their, their customers in, uh, in other countries. Um, 
now what I want to focus for last uh, but not least, the keys to market entry for uh, for Finnish companies when they want to enter the, this market. You have different ways. Either you could find a distributor with an e-shop, what I was mentioning about retailers. Uh, what you need to take into account is obviously the logistic is an important factor in Poland. Uh, so logistic would go through the distributor. You'll have a quick uh, delivery and return. Uh, you will rely on his notoriety and it's mostly adapted to new products with low volumes. Uh, but please bear in mind that there is no big e-commerce distributor in Poland. You don't have the equivalent of I don't know, Amazon in Germany when you want to have a big e-commerce player that will buy and sell on the market. Uh, Allegro will work in a bit different way. They will show you a bit uh, how they work, but also very uh, important uh, access market through them. But it's a different way than, than a distributor. Uh, and I will just illustrate it one of our clients uh, in the grill and barbecues and, and planchas sector, which we uh, put them in contact with the distributor uh, that buy is directly uh, from them and they uh, sell to the to the e-commerce uh, to them and after a few months they buy uh, dozens of of, uh, of barbecues for them and enter the market through the barbecues with a uh, product of a high range product the second way to enter the market uh, obviously open an e-shop in poland uh, create an entity uh, you need the logistic and warehouse partner that's the main uh, the main thing that you need to focus on in poland uh, and a promotion in poland you would have uh, in many cases uh, companies that are specialized in logistics and warehouses but they are not able to develop sales for you so we need to do a promotion we had some clients in the uh, textile internet textile area for example if you only want to have a known brand and promote on the internet that's a good way to enter the market um, and that's definitely a key issue uh, but then you'll need to have to 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 sort out the logistic part uh, and to differentiate promotion and logistics while in the first scenario that your distributor will do both and the last uh, option that you could have here uh, to enter the polish market in terms of e-commerce uh, staying in finland obviously translate your e-shop in polish you can do that you can promote them through allegro for example uh, allegro will present you that in details uh, but then you you need to have uh, obviously it will be a bit difficult for uh, logistic reactivity invoice uh, from finland uh, it's less costly at the beginning it's this approach is adapted for niche product or for kind of market assessment to see if your if your client would be uh, happy with your product in the market. It helps you to evaluate the market. Um, that's all from my side. Uh, I try to make it short and, and to present you the main opportunities. And it's a good transition to uh, the, the, our main guest here today, which is Allegro, which will present you in detail the, the company and, and the strategy of the group and how you can, they can help you to, to enter the Polish market e-commerce. Thank you very much. I just switch. Thank you, Cedric, for an excellent presentation. And before we go to the next uh, presentation and to our guest speaker, I would uh, kindly would like to remind uh, all our participants that uh, the chat is, is open. Thank you for all the questions already which are there. We will answer them during our Q&A uh, session. And uh, um, now I would like uh, to, to introduce and welcome uh, our uh, Allegro uh, guests. Uh, so, Katarzyna, the floor is yours. <laughs> thank you so much, Agnieszka. And thank you, Cedric, for this great introduction to the Polish e-commerce market. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kasia, and I'm in charge of merchant education here at Allegro. Uh, today, I'd like to tell you a bit more about our, our platform. Uh, so we're going to start with a short introduction and a few numbers about Allegro, but later I want to give you more practical information, uh, what you need to register, how you can manage your account, including information about fees, listing offers, and so on. Uh, then we'll talk about how you can promote on Allegro. And to finish the presentation, I want to show you a few useful links to help you get started on the platform. Uh, now, I assume most of you don't really know much or anything about Allegro. Um, or you didn't before you got an invite to this webinar. So let me start by giving you a short introduction so we're all on the same page. We're a mainly B2C platform uh, with a B2B program starting uh, right about now uh, that's been on the Polish market for 21 years now. Now, that means we've had a long time to figure out what Polish customers are like and how they shop. And thanks to that knowledge, we are now the 10th e-commerce platform globally, despite being the only ones on that list uh, that sell solely in Europe and more importantly in Poland. Um, about two years ago, we started to invite international sellers like yourselves to the platform. 
And back then it was still considered an experiment of sorts uh, for Allegro, but now we've got dedicated teams who work with international merchants to help them grow on a new marketplace, uh, which of course provides our users with a larger and more attractive product collection. So let's start with our market, uh, marketplace overview uh, section. I'd like to give you a few numbers that will explain why we're considered Poland's most loved marketplace. Uh, so first thing first, we've got 20 million unique uh, users visiting us every month. And 86% uh, of Polish internet users say that Allegro is their favorite shopping destination. And now my favorite number uh, is this one. 90% of our customers regularly shop on Allegro. Uh, this can, of course, be attributed to the fact that we've been on the Polish market for so long, but there's plenty of reasons for users to come back to us. Uh, loyalty programs and being able to buy safely are all very big factors. Uh, a few more numbers. Our search engine, which is a big part of being on Allegro, and I'll get to why in a bit, we've got 1.5 billion user queries every month. Uh, we also have 14 categories available on the platform, and 70% of our traffic uh, comes from mobile devices. Uh, now, there's obviously a mobile version of the website, but most of that 70% is uh, our app that we've got. And now something that I always get asked about is, okay, but what actually sells well on Allegro? Um, it really depends, and I'd like to invite you to browse the categories you're interested in for yourselves, uh, but here's a quick overview to let you know what's the most popular. So uh, the undisputed leader is Home and Garden. Um, so that grew a ton this year, as you can imagine, but was actually in the first place last year as well and keeps on growing. Then the second place is electronics, which is always a strong category all year round. And then we've got automotive, which used to be in fourth place, uh, but overtook fashion not long ago. So fashion last year was the third place, but right now uh, it fell to the fourth. And then our quickest growing categories are supermarkets uh, with 116% year over year growth. Uh, which I think would be interesting to you because, like Cedric mentioned, we saw that quite a few of you are from the uh, food section. Uh, so the supermarket category uh, is where you'll find the food product. So uh, that has had the biggest growth on the platform so far. So it's a really um, cool moment to join that category right now. And then uh, we've got health and beauty with 90.6 year-over-year uh, growth. Now, what's important to us is we want to create a platform that's attractive both for buyers and for sellers. And to help you better understand us, I want to give you information about both. And we'll start with buyers. Uh, first and foremost, they know they can find the best prices and selections on Allegro. Uh, one of the key things that helps us ensure that is you, meaning international sellers, but also programs for all sellers that lower their commission down to even 0.5% if they can offer attractive products we see are missing. So we basically have a new list every month with products, and if you can provide those, uh, then you can be on that list and get a very, very low commission. Then we've got the smart loyalty program for frequent buyers. And as you can remember, 90% of our users are frequent buyers. So this is a very big deal. Uh, the way smart works is a user pays a small amount, uh, a month or a year, and then they can get free delivery all covered by Electron. Uh, we, of course, have instant payments and financing. Uh, and a money-back guarantee covered by Allegro. Uh, essentially, it's a buyer protection program. So in case someone can get a refund from a seller, even though that they should, uh, they'll get their money back from us. Uh, this safety online is very, very important to buyers. And then uh, apart from the platform, we also run articles and blogs that provide users with high quality content. And now let's get to the seller side of things. Um, first, and we'll go into more detail in a minute, I promise, because it's important. Uh, there are no listing fees for the vast majority of products. We operate mainly on the commission fee. Uh, we've got a very wide range of promotion tools, both ones that I'm sure you're familiar with uh, because they're similar to other platforms, as well as ones that we tailored to Polish Allegro customers. And uh, we are also a brand that helps customers uh, trust cross-border transactions and hopefully can help you in case you hit any barriers on the way. And now let's get to the practical portion of the presentation. And I want to start with the registration, which is important. Um, the process is simple. 
first you have to fill out a registration form with some basic information like the login that you want to use and basic company details. There is no contract that you need to sign importantly, and all you need to do is accept our terms and conditions, which I like to do here. So when you get a, our presentation after this webinar, you'll be able to see them for yourself. Next, we'll ask you to send us some documents. Uh, we ask our sellers to translate all their documents into either Polish or English. Uh, so I'm guessing English will be way easier in your case. And then the last step is the verification transfer needed for us to create an e-wallet for you, uh, where your funds will be stored before you withdraw them to your business account. And we accept all major, uh, major currencies here. I listed Euro, uh, US dollars, and Polish water, but there's more. Um, and if you need details, then I'll be happy to help you with that. Um, now, I want to talk to you about the platform itself, because it is a little different to what you're probably used to. This is an example of a listing. And in contrast to Amazon, for example, we have an offer-based structure. Uh, so that means that if I look for an iPhone 10, for example, I'll get multiple pages of the same product from different sellers. So uh, just like here for the Redmi uh, phone, um, I'll be able to see different offers of the same product on the listing. Um, now, we are in the process of productization. Uh, which means our product base is growing to make listing new offers quicker and to also show product views to buyers in selected categories. So slowly we're becoming more product based here. Uh, now, because we are offer based, it is very important for you to know how to make sure that your offers are on the first page uh, of the listing, right? Because that is something that um, is very important for you to know. So there are a few factors that impact that. Um, basically, an offer needs to be uh, of high quality and your account needs to have a high quality. So that means an offer should have a good title, uh, fill out the, filled out parameters that describe the product. And these parameters are very important when you list an offer because they can also help our search engine um, find your product way easier. So it can rank higher and it is uh, way easier to find um, by people. Then the offers that generate more views uh, are generally more attractive, so they tend to be shown higher. Uh, if your reviews are good and you're trusted by buyers, then your offers will, of course, be higher on the listing. And you can, of course, also use promotion tools to boost your position on the listing, especially in the beginning, uh, if you have to compete against sellers who have been on the platform for some time. Now, I want to quickly run through some basic offer rules so you understand what I mean by a good offer or a good title, right? So first, all offers on the platform need to be in Polish. And if that generates any problems, there are a few things you can do. Uh, first of all, listing offers that are in our product base already via flat files uh, can generate a Polish title and description for you. So if you use flat files on any other platform, then you shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, we also have a service provider network with partners who can help you with translations uh, and many other things, which I'll mention in a bit. Plus, uh, actually, Google Translate is surprisingly effective, but maybe I would resort to that uh, at the last place there. Uh, an important point here is also that uh, the titles have a 50 character limit and should not manipulate keywords. So if you've got a dress from Zara that you're selling, calling it almost like Prada in the title will probably get suspended. So uh, offer descriptions should also be in Polish. Uh, they should be informative and visually attractive. And you can choose from different layouts, add up to 16 pictures to each offer. You can create multivariant offers if you so wish. Uh, and you can create product sets to make the offer more attractive. Uh, we have dedicated tabs where you can add information about return terms, your contact details, any shipping information that's important. So you don't have to add it to each offer's description. Uh, it is actually discouraged. Now, the first picture that you'll add to your offer will be its thumbnail. And because we want everything on the platform to look professional and sleek, all thumbnails need a white background and should only show what you're selling so there's no confusion in case the buyer thinks that uh, they can buy the extra thing that you showed on the thumbnail. Of course, if you sell fashion, for example, you can show people modeling clothes or accessories if needed. Uh, and here's an example of exactly that. 
Then gallery pictures, so all the ones that you add after the thumbnail, have more relaxed rules. Uh, they don't need a white background and can show additional elements as long as you don't add any writing to them. So you can show packaging, you can show numbers, you can show a lot of things just as long as you don't write um, on the picture itself. Uh, and this is an example for you. Now, let's talk about what you need to know to manage your account uh, successfully, starting with offer and order management. And I want to start with something important. I've been told to maybe not mention it uh, in the first place and just move it a little bit further, but I think it's one of the main questions that are posed, and Cedric touched on that a little bit, uh, so I'd like to address it first. We do not yet have fulfillment services, which means that you're the ones in charge of organizing delivery when it comes to Allegro. To help you with that, again, we've got the service provider network that I mentioned before. Um, so you can contact ex experienced partners uh, who we know have experience helping Allegro sellers, and they can support you with anything you need, from delivery to um, having a warehouse in Poland and so on. Uh, but the packages do not need to be uh, sent from Poland, so shipping them from Finland is perfectly okay as well. Uh, now, when it comes to offer upload, I already touched on that, but we've got flat file upload available. So you can use a simple Excel sheet to list up to 10,000 offers in one go. And uploading offers this way, again, can also provide you with a Polish title and description as long as the product that you're selling is in our database. And you can add those products to our database the first time you list something new. Uh, so then later via flat files, it makes it so much easier as well. Uh, for those of you with IT skills or dev teams, you can also connect to us using our API. Um, so you can manage your Allegro account from your platform and list offers in bulk as well. And then we also have a nice variety of integrators connected to us. So if the previous two options don't work for you, but you'd like a little bit more support or you want to manage your platforms from one spot, uh, we also have integrators available and you will also find them in our service provider network. Uh, but in general, offer and order management is as easy as can, as can be, all done from one tab with built-in filters. So if you want to manage sales from the platform itself, you shouldn't run into any problems. And now let's talk finance very quickly. Uh, first, since all our customers pay in Polish Złote, that is the one currency that we use on the platform. Uh, the main payment operator we use is PayU. Uh, and you, again, don't need to register an account with them or anything like that. All you need to know is that we'll create a pay you wallet for you during registration. Uh, and then for a very small percentage of transactions, you may need to activate a Przelewy24 or P24 for short uh, wallet. Um, so I, I saw a question on chat asking for the main payment providers in Poland. That would be the main two. Um, and then uh, if uh, when withdrawing funds, uh, you can withdraw them from your wallet to your bank account or for non-EA sellers, a third party payment platform account, but I imagine that is not the case for you. Then the payout frequency is twice a month on the first and the 14th day of the month. And then one of the most popular questions is obviously about fees, so let's talk about them. The main fee we have is a commission fee, which varies depending on category. Uh, there are no obligatory subscription fees, and most categories do not have a listing fee. And just so I don't sound vague or, I like, or like I'm trying to hide anything from you, um, we've got listing fees and real estate, heavy machinery, cars, and motorcycles. So not the usual things that we see from international sellers. And then, of course, if you use any promotion options, there are fees connected to that as well. Uh, now, there are two ways that you can check your fees uh, in the fee calculator that is available in your Allegro account uh, once you register. Uh, and that takes into account any discounts that you may have in your account as well. So it's a really nice tool. And then you can also check those fees in Appendix 4, which is an appendix to our terms and conditions. And it is basically a very detailed document with all the subcategories that we have. All right, and the last section that we're going to talk about is all about promoting on the platform. Uh, first, we've got our basic options called Feature, Highlight, and Bold, and these will make your offer stand out and appear higher on the listing. So Feature, for example, is one of our main 
uh, promotion options. You'll see, uh, see it a lot if you participate in any uh, sales campaigns, for example, uh, because you can get it as a reward. And basically what Feature does is it puts your offer higher on the listing than all the offers that did not use that option. So it's a very good tool for you to uh, start with because um, you can gain some visibility right off the bat. Then uh, something important, the best sellers on the platform become super sellers and getting a super seller badge helps attract more customers, uh, gives you bonus promotion tools to use for free and boosts your offers on the listing, which is important because then, like I mentioned, um, your quality as a seller also impacts how high your offers will show. Then the coins are essentially points buyers collect to get a discount on their next purchase, and you can get free ones as a super seller or buy them to make your offers more attractive. Uh, we also have a space called Deal Zone, where buyers can find the best deals on the platform, and it's a great way to really boost your offer's sales and visibility. Uh, also, any major sales campaigns like Black Week or Smart Week or the Winter Sale, uh, a lot of them happening in Q4, um, are going to be hosted on the Deal Zone. So it's good for you to know that it exists and that it is very attractive, especially for new uh, sellers. Um, and last but not least, we offer optional store subscription plans. Um, so if you'd like to get access to statistics or customize your store to make it more attractive, you can try one of these plans. Um, so you can make sure that your store stands out. You can add filters, labels, everything that you may need uh, to make sure that client retention uh, is high. And now for something most of you know from other platforms, paid advertising. Uh, we have a tool called Allegro Ads, which lets you easily create paid ad campaigns on Allegro itself, but also on Facebook and on Google. Um, and that is all in one tool. Uh, what's cool about Allegro Ads is they are shown in the best spots on the platform and correspond to buyer queries. So they're all people that actually have the potential to uh, click your offer. Uh, all ads work based on the daily budget uh, that you set, and they are paid per click. So you only pay once someone is actually interested in what you're selling. And something very important, you can start and stop campaigns anytime you want. So it's not a big commitment. You can just start uh, monitor statistics uh, in real time, which is really cool. Um, and you can just check how your campaigns are doing uh, to make sure that they're optimized. Uh, and then for those of you with less time or patience, uh, we've got a simplified version of the tool called Ad Express. So that lets the algorithm choose your best offers. Uh, so then all you need to do is just uh, click once to set a daily budget and you're ready to advertise. And again, you can simply start and stop campaigns uh, however you want. And then the last thing I want to show you is a list of useful links, and I would highly recommend Allegro Academy on that list. It's a free training platform for all sellers uh, and includes courses and light English webinars. Uh, also, the help center that we've got is fully in English, so uh, you can also take a look at that if you've got any additional questions about details of any programs that we have, for example. And uh, before I give the floor to uh, my co-hosts as well, and we get to the Q&A portion, I would also like to tell you one important thing. Um, we have a welcome program for all new business accounts at Allegro that is valid until the end of the year. So the sooner you register, the better it is for you. Um, you will get a package of free promotion options, uh, a budget for your ad campaigns to start out, and a commission refund of up to 10,000 water, um, which means a month. So that means that in November and December, you may not even need to pay us commission. And since Q4 is full of sales campaigns, I'd say that it's a good moment to join us. Uh, so if you're interested in that welcome program, um, then feel free to ask me about it or just register an account and um, I'll see you on the platform. Now, I think that would be all from my side. Uh, thank you very much. And I already see some questions coming in. Um, so I will maybe ask Cedric and Agnieszka to turn their cameras on so we can all get to answering those questions for you. Thank you, Katarzyna, for a very, very interesting uh, introduction to the, to the platform of Allegro. Uh, I would like to go uh, with, with the chat box. Uh, so of course. 
So uh, let's divide the question uh, between us, if we can help uh, our participants. Uh, All right. First, <laughs> the first question, uh, it was about um, um, difference in, in our statistic or numbers in terms of B to C uh, versus B to B uh, e-commerce in, in Poland. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the question. I'm not sure if we have in our report, Cedric, these numbers out of the pocket. Uh, I for sure have it in some report, but couldn't uh, find it during our conference, uh, that, our webinar. Uh, so yeah, uh, we, we well uh, we don't have the exact figures here on my side. Maybe Kasia, you have some figures, but I think uh, uh, we need to investigate. Also, it also depends in which industry we are talking about, because in exactly. some industries B two B is much higher than B two C, and for the other it's the other way around. So we would need to to go a bit more into details on that, because there is no kind of general statistics and so on. Um, so yeah, difficult to answer this one. To be honest, at this stage, maybe we can gather this information and and uh, and send it to the participants after the after the presentation. Maybe if if they can specify for which sector, for which industry, uh, that would be uh, that would be good also, so that we can have the right information. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, that's it. So Miko, if it's okay for you, we will just uh, come back to the answering the question in uh, in details just after the mm -hmm. webinar. Okay. That's it. So for Poland, I'll uh, I'll let Cedric and Agnieszka uh, get mm -hmm. those numbers for you. When it comes to Allegro, it's mostly B two C for now. Uh, we're slowly starting the B two B side of things. So um, if you would like, I can uh, get you in touch with the person responsible for that uh, section, and they'll be able to tell you a bit more. All right then. Okay. Okay. Uh, then, then the next question, uh, are there any Fed figures about B2B e-commerce market available? Yes, of course they are, depends uh, what kind of the figures uh, which uh, you, Jaco, would like to know. Uh, so um, we didn't put it in our webinar, that detail, because uh, we didn't have that, that much time to, to just uh, focus on, on the on the sector. We have this information available, so we can send it uh, to you after the webinar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the same type of question, I think, for these specific figures, we can gather them. If, if there are any specific questions on that, in either it should be an industry, specific industry, or the overall Polish market or something, then we can uh, we can provide with the proper information on that, yeah. Okay, uh, and I see the next question. Is there a demand for gluten-free products, especially for flowers and flower mixes, and do Polish people like baking? Um, so there is definitely a demand because, like I said, with the supermarket category, it's grown so, so much. Uh, and I myself <laughs> bought flour as well back in April uh, when I just couldn't find it anywhere in the stores that were near me. Um, as for the Polish people like baking, uh, Agnieszka, Cedric, I would say yes. I don't know if you have any stats on that. Uh, just from you know personal experience, I would say definitely, but uh, I don't know if you have any other answers here. Yeah, I will, I will complete maybe with this uh, yes, because usually gluten-free products and organic gluten-free, free from and so on are, are booming actually in Poland. We conducted quite a lot of projects in this area for the last few years actually, and we see a growth between 15 to 20 percent year per year uh, on this uh, in this whole gluten-free, free from and and organic products. So definitely a big market here. We, I was mentioning about Organic Farm opening this big uh, warehouse uh, in the center of Poland to to deliver the uh, the organic market and uh, uh, all this uh, this type of, of market so it's definitely a big big uh, market growing at the moment as for specific floors and floors mixes we have few clients in this area also uh, there are a lot of companies already in Poland uh, providing floors and floors mixes so you need to check if you are competitive with the with these companies because they are also switching to organic and and free from and, and gluten free so you need to analyze the competitive environment but um, Polish people like uh, baking, but there is also a big tradition of buying bread uh, in a bakery, and there is a lot of bakeries. I think uh, for the latest figures we had on this type of project, I think there are over 10,000 or something like these bakeries for, uh, for 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 specific areas. So it's a, it's a big uh, people like to buy bread almost every day. Uh, a lot of them started to cook at home with the, with the COVID, I would say, yeah. so uh, to bake at home. Um, so yeah, it's it's a mix between that. They, they love bread, uh, so definitely there's a market here. 
baking, uh, I would say yes and no because there's a long tradition of bakery uh, to buy uh, your 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 bread at the bakery. Uh, but yeah, not not they also like to bake pizza, for example, or they like to bake for the children. Or it's so not only bread, but uh, yeah, there is there is a market here, and uh, and definitely uh, it's growing at the moment. This all this type of uh, of floors and floor mixes. Yeah. Yeah, ju ju just just agree. It's a very general question. So, uh, Tina, if you would like to know know more, I know that our colleagues in Warsaw prepared a special report with the list of the of the potential customers also for Finnish companies. So I can I can connect you with uh, with, with with the colleagues in um, in our office as well. But totally agree with both uh, Cedric and Katarzyna. Yeah, the next the next question: the wholesalers moving to be to be e-commerce. Would there be a list of the Polish uh, wholesalers, or could you indicate which merchants have a business uh, to business uh, uh, as well? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Wholesaler I, I might be linked to the what I mentioned about maybe my neighbors yeah. moving to 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 be to be. Maybe I don't know. I think it's around that. The food, uh, the food sectors, like like Kasia said, and I, I mentioned also that groceries and and uh, and food products, supermarkets, so on, are moving to the. Uh, to the online uh, sales, so definitely uh, it's, it's it's growing. Uh, uh, list, uh, I think th there are some some players we can uh, we can um, find out the list. Obviously, difficult to have an exhaustive an exhaustive list because you have big players and you have smaller players, regional players, just selling around in the area of Krakow, or Warsaw, or whatever. So uh, there is not an exhaustive list, and, and it's changing every day. As I mentioned, there are uh, shops opening every day at the moment, e-shops opening every day. So it's changing, but yes, for sure there are. A lot of big players, uh, in the, especially in the food sector, what we're mentioning, that are moving to e-commerce, and uh, we can have a, a list of major ones that are that are now moving to to the e-commerce. Okay. All right. Who are the main uh, online uh, payment service into Poland? I have I have already Yarko, sent you um, a private email uh, answering those th th this question. So. Uh, if you would like to have a few names, I think Kasia mentioned uh, mentioned in her presentation. But we have uh, Trelewy Twenty Four as a as a main provider, eCard as as a uh, dot pay. Of course, is one of the uh, one one of the fa famous. But uh, uh, it's it's uh, um, it's of course the, the list. It's it's longer than those, those one. So yeah, of course, there are there are, there are majors, and we have the list of people for that. All right, I guess this question would be for me. Are there also frozen products in the assortment? Yes, yes, there are. And this is a question that I've been getting more and more from international sellers mostly. Uh, so I think this is going to grow uh, pretty soon uh, because any webinar that I do uh, this quarter, at least, it seems like people do ask about those frozen products. Yes, there is a second for that as well. Just maybe one question I have. We're we'll rounding on that to, to you, Kasia. Uh, yeah. Do you have in your list of uh, of uh, integrators and and uh, fulfillment companies, companies specialized in logistics in uh, in frozen products? Actually, so uh, as I'm not the one who created the SPN, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. I will, I can definitely ask because it was my colleague from my team. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll definitely ask him if he can recommend uh, any of those service providers for the food uh, category in particular, because that would definitely be useful. Frozen food, yeah. All right. Should all products have Polish packaging or is English enough? Uh, so the packaging itself, it doesn't need to be Polish. You don't have to worry about that. But if you, for example, include... Uh, um, any instruction manuals uh, with your product, those should be in Polish. Um, because basically with Polish customers, we don't really expect them to all speak English. The packaging is perfectly okay. Uh, the instructions should come in Polish if you don't include them. You don't have to, but if you do, uh, it's good to have them in Polish. Okay, the, the next one probably is also for you, Kasia. Uh -huh. Do you have a pet category? Yes, and it is growing very quickly. Uh, as a pet owner myself, I'm very happy with it because now I can buy everything from one spot. Uh, yes, the pet category, it's actually grown as well a lot this year. Uh, and we have a dedicated team um, that basically lurks on our Allegro Pets channel 
Uh, and so that's how I know that uh, every two weeks they have a new campaign um, for sellers, for buyers. So that's definitely a, uh, an exciting category to be in. The next one is about the, if I were to use a warehouse in Poland, do I need a Polish VIP number? Actually, we discussed it before the webinar internally, right? I'm not sure. Maybe, uh, maybe Kasia, can you start with this one? So uh, with warehouses in Poland, I don't believe so, but I would have to double check that for you uh, because I know that, um, again, the person responsible for the service provider network uh, did have some discussions about that uh, with those providers. So I'll just have to get back to you uh, on that if Agnieszka, you do not have more information. I will I will just uh, jump on that. Actually, it, it all depends. It depends actually on the business model that you. That's what different market entries I showed you. Uh, if you if your partner is uh, only kind of warehouse, uh, maybe you might need a fiscal number to invoice and to and to work for that. But they have different options. We know we know different uh, market players, warehouses, and logistic players that can offer uh, many services. Even with Allegro, for example, even the promotion on Allegro and and all these type of services directly. Uh, they will deal with the logistics. You sell them percent of the product, and they will have. A, but you don't have. In this case, you don't need to have a VAT number. And in other cases, you need to you need to have a VAT number if you would uh, if you would invoice directly clients, for example. So it all depends what types of agreement you'd have. Um, for some of our clients, if 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 you treat your partner, your warehouse, as a distributor, or, or he can take the whole project and taking your products, buying them. Uh, maybe making some packaging and and then sending uh, sending over to client, but some in some cases you have just uh, the warehouses services and you have to deal yourself with the with the invoicing with the uh, with the the return on product and so on. So it, it all depends what agreement you have and you have different types of of services provider in here and it really depends what you what product and and what are the conditions you deal with them. That's it. All right, and I guess our last question. Um, let me just put it on the main screen for us. Uh, is online sale of alcoholics, uh, beers and ciders allowed in Poland? Uh, in Poland, yes, on Allegro, unfortunately not anymore. We did used to have the alcoholic section with mostly wine, uh, but because the law about online sales of alcohol changed quite a bit, to be on the safer side, we did have to disable that category. And I think uh, that would be it for our questions for today. Yes. You're right on time. <laughs> Perfect. I don't, I don't see any, 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 any more questions. So thank you. Thank you very much for the active participation uh, today. And uh, I hope that the webinar was uh, um, helpful and useful for, for, uh, for all the participants. Uh, I would like just uh, to mention that we, we, if you would like to have a, a follow up on on, uh, on the webinar and have more questions, please please contact uh, uh, us. Uh, we are on on, on your service uh, here. So um, and we also would like to hear your feedback about uh, the, the webinar. If, if was it interesting for for our 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 guests, our participants. So if no other questions, I would like just to. Thank you very much and wishing you a, a fantastic day. Thank you very much to you all and uh, at your disposal if any questions at some stage. Thank you, Kasia. Thank you, Agnieszka, for the organization. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And if you've got any questions, uh, please email us uh, after the follow up email. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Kasia, can Thank you. you. Can you give up the last slide because there are our contact details? Maybe somebody would like to contact us. Uh, uh, the webinar. Yes, let me just do that very quickly okay. for you. Ah, they uploaded not in a great way, but they'll also be available in that follow up email that I'll send uh, over as soon as possible. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye bye.